Welcome to the Bethel Podcast. We hope you enjoy this free exclusive content from Bethel Church. For more information about this podcast and other resources, visit ibethel.org. This is a great friend of, of ours, and uh, we met a little over a year ago, and her story absolutely rocked. Um, uh, she, she came to our house uh, a year ago, and Candace and I were completely wrecked by the end of our time uh, with her. And uh, she came back for a visit. Obviously, she's here now. And uh, so why don't you welcome our friend and as uh, she comes to share her story. Come on up. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Appreciate your uh, friendly uh, welcome. Um, yeah, I'm from Middle East. I'm really happy to be here with you and share the story what the Lord has um, to share. And if you have your Bibles, you can open the Revelation chapter 12 and it's verse 11. And it's a, a scripture of my life I just would love to share with you. And it says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And let me pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence. And we just invite you again to come and open up our hearts and minds and um, ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Lord, and I thank you that you will anoint every word that will be from you. I ask for spirit of wisdom and revelation to prepare every heart, Lord, and ears and mind. Just eyes be open to see what you see, Lord, and feel what you're feeling, Lord. I thank you for open heaven, angels released to minister. Lord, and uh, Lord, I thank you that you're releasing the message of heaven and you're awakening your bride for such a time as this. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, I just bless you and I thank you, Lord, that you're with us, Emmanuel. We love you, we adore you and bless your holy name. And this is your story for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I'm coming from Middle East and I want to share with you because we overcame by his blood and by the word of our testimony. We did, uh, I did not love my life even unto death. And I'm coming from my background. It's a Muslim. I grew up in a Muslim family. And I was really practicing Islam. And I was really zealous and really uh, um, um, radical Muslim. I prayed five times a day and I was going to mosque and, uh, and uh, also uh, reading Quran and recruiting others to Islam. And uh, that was my background. And uh, the Lord come to Muslims the most of the ways through dreams and visions. And, um, and thank you for your prayers as well. And he does come through dreams and visions and reveals himself that he's a, uh, the, he is only the way and truth and life. And I just would like to share that. But I grew up in a big family. I'm the 10th child. And my father was actually elder um, of uh, Islam. He's a religious leader and teacher. And, uh, and growing up, I just was influenced by his uh, life and his devotion. And... Um, but at the same time, I was really seeking and searching for God. I was really hungry for His uh, truth. And uh, really, when you go uh, get to know the truth, truth sets you free. And what happened in my life, I was really uh, searching. But um, as a Muslim, Muslim girls, they start practice Islam when they're nine years old. They uh, consider to be mature, to start wearing burqa and all the, uh, and uh, practicing Islam. The guys consider uh, uh, adults when they're 12. And they started practicing Islam. Because I was so um, passionate and zealous, I started at 7 because I was really want to find God. Uh, and um, I was praying, fasting Ramadan, praying five times a day and even more. And I was doing everything to earn my ticket to heaven because I knew I'm a Muslim and if I die, I'll go, go to hell. And I was really afraid to die. And I was really paralyzed by fear. And because the stronghold of Islam is fear. And it's paralyzed me. And I was really like trying to please God by earning, 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 doing, doing, doing. And, uh, but in religion, it's not life, basically. What happened to me, uh, the Lord, He's so gracious. But um, before everything get better, everything get worse. What happened in my country, war broke up. In many Middle Eastern, uh, co- Middle Eastern countries, it's war. Uh, but, um, and one of the war broke up in my country. 
And uh, it was really devastating war. Basically, Muslims were fighting against Muslims. And they were, uh, what's going on right now, like in Egypt, it's kind of what's going on at that time in my country. And um, it was basically Islamic uh, brothers, brothers who want to bring Sharia law in my country. And basically, Sunni and Shia was fighting to bring freedom in this, uh, basically. Somebody want freedom in Islam, somebody actually doesn't want to have freedom because we were under communism. And the communists were oppression, it was different. But when communism collapsed in our country, when uh, the Muslims uh, try to take over, they started fighting who will take over, Sunni or Shia. And in this moment, like genocide was in my country. It was uh, 100,000 were killed. And it was really so much death. And I was just a child. When everything happened, I was probably 11 or something. And in this moment, um, I never, I mean, I grew up in a family. Also, my father, I mean, and we had everything. And suddenly, we lost everything. And in one day, war came. And we weren't ready. It came really suddenly. And um, we had, uh, basically, all our windows were shooted by snipers. And uh, all the transportation was tanks, no more transportation. And uh, any helicopter or any airplane comes, we know what they're going to do. They're going to drop bombs. And basically, all the explosions were going on in our country. And uh, basically, we were just hiding in the basement and, and uh, waiting to die. And uh, in this moment of uh, really facing death, I saw so much death as well. So many were brutally raped and killed my neighborhood. And uh, as a child, I saw so much uh, death, and I was really paralyzed and had night- nightmares because I knew if I was going to die, I'll go to hell. And I was so afraid to die because um, I'm going to hell and burn in eternity. And I knew I couldn't earn... Uh, I don't know if I'll, uh, I'll be... Um, actually in heaven. And because of that, no assurance of heaven, I was really paralyzed. And in this moment, uh, on top of this, we had famine because in our country, um, no one was ready uh, for the war and all the supplies were gone. And nothing, no one was ready for war. And basically, we were all starving to death. And uh, in this moment, uh, staying in the line to trying to get some bread in, for our family, we were uh, just... Uh, uh, in the lines and uh, having four seasons because uh, we didn't have electricity or water or anything. In the winter time, people were froze, uh, frozen to death, like frozen to death. And it was really uh, so much death, basically. And uh, elder people and uh, ch- children were basically uh, dying. And uh, so much death. And in this moment, uh, police trying to uh, keep us in line and in order, and they were trying to... Uh, keep us, but when they open the door, because in the country it's like millions of people, and the, everyone trying to get the bread and bring to their families, and everyone trying to be forced, but because people starving to death, they're killing each other for a piece of bread, and they were going over heads, and I was just little bony, all skeleton, and I was, they were just going over me, and I was almost crushed there in the line of bread, but the police started shooting on the air and saying, oh, we gotta get this together. But people weren't listening because they were so hungry and starving to death. They started shooting on the people. And the bullets were just an uh, inch just missing me. And in this moment, I'm really facing death. And like p- people dropping next to me. And I, I was like uh, paralyzed and I shaking with fear that I will be now uh, facing death. And in this moment, I started crying out all my prayers that I uh, knew. I was reciting all the prayers in Islam and, uh, uh, and crying out to Allah, say me, uh, help me. And uh, he wasn't answering, and I was so devastated, and I was so desperate that I started crying to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I read in Quran. And God of, uh, and I said, if you're real, if you exist, Jesus, if you're real, God, cre- creator God, just save me, save my life. I'm so desperate, I'm hopeless, I, I need hope. And in this moment, I was miraculously, uh, supernaturally saved from this chaos. And I was released, and I started pondering if God of uh, Jews and Christians is real God. And, uh, but I was really, uh, pondering my heart. I didn't tell to anyone this miracle would happen, but I was like, I was wondering if, if it was a coincidence or if it was real. Uh, because of that, I was like, if it's happened again, I will, I will for sure know. I need to try and, and see. But what happens, um, uh, uh, because I'm the youngest and all my fathers and I mean, my brothers were in military. Men were forced to be in a war. And, uh, and they were very protective over me, didn't want that anything will happen to their youngest uh, uh, sister and my, uh, their youngest daughter. They just were too protective, my parents and my brothers. They put me in martial arts. In order that I will learn martial arts, anyone uh, actually attack me, I can, I know self-defense. 
And because of that, I went to martial arts. And I love sports. I grew up uh, very athletic. But I really... Uh, it was kind of hiding place during the war. And I went there to learn uh, martial arts. And my coach, he was really searching, even though he was a Muslim, because the country I'm coming from is all Muslim. And, um, and I was really, uh, uh, he brought the children Bible, basically, after training. He said, if you really want to stay after training and read the Bible, you're welcome to come. But you know, for Muslims, it's really forbidden to read the Bible. You have freedom here to read your Bible. No one will persecute you. But there you will be in trouble. And especially if you're Muslim. And I was like, oh, it's forbidden book. How come uh, he's offering to read the Bible? And I was so uh, fascinated by the picture. As a children's Bible have a lot of illustration and pictures. But in Quran, it's no illustration, no pictures. And I was like, oh, I was fascinated, <laughs> captivated. Because we are such a visionary generation. that so I was captivated by the beautiful pictures of the Bible. And I was like, I, want it. I just want to search it out for myself. Why is forbidden? And basically, I didn't tell to my parents and to my uh, family or friends, anyone. I was just hiding and reading a Bible. And uh, I just want to search it out. And I couldn't put it down. But when you get to know the truth, truth sets you free. And my friend, she had a New Testament as well. Uh, we were hiding when uh, they were trying to play, the kids. We were just hiding and reading the Bible. I was really hungry for truth. And the truth really set me free. But uh, because we didn't have during the war electricity, uh, sometimes we had it and we were uh, flipping the channels and I saw that cartoon, and it was Jesus' uh, cartoon about Superbook and all the miracles that Jesus performed and I was really captivated as a child to the beautiful miracles that Jesus performed and I won a miracle in my life and uh, what happened, I was uh, one random day in our streets was like, continue war going on, it's war when uh, years and it was really um, in this moment um a devastation and oppression and depression, so much death. Um, random guys brought a movie and they set up and uh, we said, we're going to die anyway, let's go watch a movie. And we didn't know that I had a clue what movie we're going to watch. But guess what movie was it? It was Jesus film. And I was, I was so touched by the Jesus film that I was weeping and I was sobbing and I came home and I was bombarding my father with the questions saying, Jesus couldn't be only a prophet. Look, he opened the blind eyes. He opened the deaf ear. He made the um, paralyzed walk. And he actually, look, he raised the dead. And he's actually risen from the dead. Compared to Muhammad, his um, grave is still in Mecca. But his grave is empty. How come? It's like, I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I was really, I was really was searching. And I was just asking questions to my dad. Uh, and I was saying, I couldn't be, uh, look, he couldn't be only a prophet because for Muslims, Jesus is only a prophet. And I said, he's more than a prophet as a childlike language I had at that time. I was telling to my dad, he's my superhero. And my dad actually said to me, Jesus, actually, he's the greatest prophet even for Muslims. I was like, really? Tell me about it. And he's like, he actually going to come as a judge second time. And second coming of Jesus, every Muslim is expecting to come him as a judge. And I was really, in this moment, I was really stirred up to really search about Jesus. Who is he? And my dad gave me a blessing, but he didn't have a clue what he's giving a blessing to. But praise the Lord for his favor. <laughs> Being a youngest, a baby of the family, love is his love. But praise the Lord. Uh, and what happened? I started searching about Jesus. And uh, like I told you, I started reading a Bible. And uh, and the most of the way he comes to dreams and visions. But basically, Jesus started coming to me in my dreams. And he revealed himself as a Middle Eastern man in his white robe and coming in my dreams and showing that he is the way. He was basically was showing me a way. And uh, eventually when I read Gospel of John 14, 6, it says that he's the way and truth and life. And I was really overwhelmed. And he was continuing coming in a dream and uh, showing himself. And I saw Jesus come to everyone in their dreams. And he was continuing, was just wooing me with his amazing love. And what happened, um, I was already want to learn even more about Jesus. I was really uh, amazed by all the dreams that he was coming, continuing and showing uh, step by step who he, actually he is. And, uh, and basically the Bible become a life. By dreams because I was seeing it. And uh, what happened, my family um, couldn't basically pay anymore for the, uh, my martial arts classes. And I went to say to my coach, I'm quitting. And he said, don't. And, um, and he told me that he heard another guy, he's, uh, 
he's opening uh, martial arts and it's for free. I was like, I wonder why it's for free. And it said, go and check it out. And I was like, I was really, it was easy uh, music to my ear because in the war we couldn't earn money or anything. And I was like, I want to go and find out. And then uh, I went to find out basically missionary who brought the gospels through the sports. And we can uh, <laughs> praise God through all different talents and gifts that we have and share his amazing love. And uh, he brought the gospels through that. Uh, martial arts, it was such a need. And, uh, and he started sharing, I mean, introduced himself on the first day, and he started sharing about God of love. And he told me, he lo- God is love. In Islam, 99 names of God and two is missed, is Father and love. Father, because Ishmaelites there, um, Ishmael, his father Abraham, uh, uh, when he rejected him, he was an orphan, and he, because of that, thought, God is not a father and he doesn't have a son. Because of that, it's an orphan spirit. But basically, um, and then it's love, uh, no love, because um, how can I say, uh, the stronghold of Islam is fear. And I was paralyzed with fear, but when he told me God is love, I was shocked. I was like, really? Uh, and he said, I was like, prove to me he is love, because I never heard God is love. I thought, God is only a judge. I didn't know his other nature. I didn't know he is God of love. I thought he's only a just judge. I mean, and because of that, I was so terrified. Uh, everything what I did because of fear, not because of love. And I thought he's a distant God. If I will do any mistake, he will just punish me and put me in hell and I will burn in all eternity. And because of that, I was trembling with fear. And when he told me God is love, I was, I was so, uh, couldn't believe it actually to my ears. Uh, and he said, he loves you so much that he created you by his beautiful image. And he was bringing me Genesis 127. I was like, what? Because being a woman in Islam, woman doesn't have any value. And it was really like he created me by his image. It's unthinkable. And I was so touched and moved. And then he was continuously sharing that. Not he only created by his image. He was bringing continuous word. Uh, the Psalm 139, beautifully and wonderfully by his image he created me. And then continually he was telling that. He not only loves you, but he also knows you by name. I was like, wow, it's six or seven billion people in the world. And he cares to know me by name. I was like... Uh, and he was bringing scripture, Isaiah uh, 49, that he engraved my names in his, uh, uh, in the palm of his hands, and then John 10, 10, 10 that he is a shepherd, that he knows his sheep by name, and continually was bringing scriptures. And then he was, he was really showing so much value, and then continually was, uh, uh, saying that he actually not only knows you by name, but he also actually numbered the hair in your head. And it was so, uh, Moving me, I couldn't, uh, uh, it was so just touching because I was like, uh, I don't even know how many hair have my head, but he really cares for me. So much details of my life, it's like he really cares. So he counted my hair, I don't even know. And then I was a beautician from my childhood, I just loved hair, and it was like such a God's love language, how he speaks to us. And he knows the kiss of our heart, and I was so touched and moved. But then what really touched me, he told me, that God loved me so much that he gave his only son that died for me. And uh, all my life, uh, no one died for me, even Muhammad. He didn't die for me in order to save my life. But God loved me so much that he sacrificed his only son to die for me. No one died for me, no any other religion I started comparing. No Buddha, he didn't die for me in order to save me or give me eternal life. No uh, Krishna or Hindu, any other religion isn't uh, showing such a love and only like was showing me such a love. But do you know in Middle East we need signs and wonders. It was amazing news, but I wasn't experiencing yet. And I was like so moved. It was like such a hope was rising in my life. And my coaches invited me to come to church. I was like, are you kidding me? I will be in trouble if I go to church. And uh, they will call me infidel and stone me. And uh, I will be in trouble. And I said, uh, I was, but I really was desperate. I was continuing pursuing and saying, come to church. And I was so, um, I just was, it was my last hope. I was so desperate. And I knew if I'll go to hell. And I was like, it was just bursting hope. And I went to church, not saying anyone. I just told my family, I'm going to training. But I didn't say I'm going to spiritual training. But anyways, <laughs> um, I just say I'm going to training. And um, I didn't go to details. Anyways, when I, I went to church, I saw such a love atmosphere. 
The church was so persecuted and was really a manifestation of the Holy Spirit was powerful. And I felt such a, a love of God was overwhelming. And uh, like in the Bible said, when you truly love each other, you truly my disciples. I was so moved by such a love. And then also... Um, was such an overwhelming joy. Everyone was drunk in the spirit or weeping in the church. So like on the ground, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? But I, I was overwhelmed. I was like, uh, I never experienced that. And especially in the world being so much depression and oppression and death, I was like, how come these people can rejoice? And I'm, I, I want that joy, but I can't have it. It's really contagious. I want it, but I can't have it. How can I get it? But anyways, uh, in this all like questioning my mind, um, a pastor, he made an uh, altar call after sermon. And he invites to come receive Jesus. I said, I said, no, 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 thank you. I'm a Muslim. I'm like, I'm hiding. Like, no one can see. I was like all in a Muslim outfit now. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I was just hiding. No one will catch me. And, uh, but <laughs> what happens? I went to, with my friend. And, um, but the key uh, uh, invitation the pastor made, he said, uh, Jesus is an answer. And if you have any needs, come and He's a living God. He answers prayers. And that brought me back to the prayer that I pondered in my heart when Jesus saved me from that shooting uh, in the, um, when I was waiting for the uh, food to g- uh, get. And, uh, and I was like, oh, really? And I was like, I'm going to go and challenge this God if he's real with the biggest prayer request. And it was, I really want a peace in my country. And I was like, peace in Middle East. And this is the biggest. If he will bring peace in my country, I will believe he is a real God. And I went with this big challenge to, uh, uh, f- uh, to find out his real God. If he answers, he's real God. And I went to receive prayer, but I was really hesitating. Church was about like 1,000 people. But like in the church was like big cross. And uh, that was a symbol of Christianity and symbol of death. And I was really hesitating to go to receive prayer because Jesus was crucified on that cross. And I was thinking, death is following me everywhere. And I was, I was so terrified. And, but I was like, I'm not looking hesitating, but I went anyway to receive prayer. But what happened, um, pastor even, even, uh, touched me. Yeah, the Holy Spirit power touched me. I was on the ground. I was like, what's going on? Oh, it's such a heavy glory touched me at the same cross that I was so, terrified even to look and hesitate i had the open vision of jesus and jesus was completely crucified and he was bleeding and um and he was pierced and he started talking to me and he said my daughter i died instead of you said you will leave and receive my love stop striving and he said Receive my love. It's a gift. I took your shame and made you holy. I took your judgment. I took your sin. I paid the price. My blood is sufficient. And I grew up with the sacrifice of the lamb all my life. After Ramadan, after 70 days, we have day of atonement. And we bring the sacrifice of the lamb. And Jesus said, I'm the ultimate lamb of God. And my sacrifice is sufficient. And he said, just Receive my love. And it's just the gift of grace. Just by believing and repenting and receiving my love, you become my child and you will be in heaven with me. Not because what you have done, but because what I have done. And I was so overwhelmed because the perfect love of God cast out all the fears. And I was set free. I was set free by the amazing love of God. And I was baptized by the Holy Spirit power. (laughs) Such a boldness came over me. (laughs) And uh, I didn't know how long I was on the ground. It was hours. But no one left when I was the last one, all sobbing and weeping on that cross. And that cross turned into a symbol of love. And um, do you know when you're in love, you can hold it. You want to tell all the world. (laughs) And then I knew now where I'm going. I wasn't afraid. Uh, of death anymore. I knew that if I'll go to heaven, and I was in such a freedom, was uh, that His presence was completely set me free, His love, and I was so free. And um, I started sharing His amazing love. 
I couldn't hold it to myself. Now I knew the way and I want everyone to come with me. Starting with my family and friends. And I said, sharing his love, I couldn't hold it to myself. I said, I'm going to blow up. <laughs> and, uh, and what happened? Uh, I started sharing with my family, with my friends, with my relatives, neighborhood, with every people that I meet, actually buses, everywhere, transportation, everywhere. I was going to hospitals, all over evangelizing about the amazing good news of freedom and love and Eternal life through the true Lamb of God. And, uh, and you know, my family saw such a change in me. And I was such a radical Muslim. But I was I transformed to radical <laughs> follower of Christ. And, you know, Jesus actually answered to my prayer. Even though I, as the war was continuing going, I didn't immediately have the peace in the country. But eventually the peace came. He answered the prayer. And, um, but there's such a peace I experienced in my life that I never experienced before. Finally, I could fall asleep without any nightmares. And finally, I had amazing peace that entered my heart that I never experienced before. And, and finally, I didn't have to uh, pray in uh, Arabic and have only, only basically a monologue. But I finally have a relationship with Jesus. Dialogue. And it's love relationship. And He really answers prayer. And He's a living God. And it's so amazing. No more religion, no more death, but life. And abundant. Abundantly. He gave me so much freedom. And uh, then my two sisters saw such a transformation and change. So they gave their heart to the Lord because they said, What happened to you? It's like heaven and earth changed transformation. I said, Jesus. And they gave their heart to the Lord. And uh, started following Jesus. But when uh, we were baptized... Um, in our country, especially in Muslim countries, when you're baptized in the water, you really declare that you become a follower of Christ. And in our ch- uh, church, they gave us a certificate of the baptism. And of course, we were uh, celebrating that we died with Jesus and we raised with Him. And now living a new life uh, as we came out from the water. But that day, our celebration was turned to the persecution because Jesus was persecuted and we will be persecuted too for our faith. But... Um, our faith will be tested through uh, trials and tribulations, but he's with us, Emmanuel. What happened? Um, my family all came against me because uh, next to my home it's a mosque, and they try, uh, threatened to kill me. And because I brought so much riot and so much, uh, they said, um, because it's a jihad, it's a holy war against unbelievers, and I was a uh, convert from Islam, and um, I was supposed to be killed. Or unless they gave me a choice, actually, they told to my parents and my family, uh, if they will give me a chance, if I will renounce Jesus and come back to Islam, I will, I will leave. But if I will not, they're going to kill me. And um, they came to me and said they're going to disown me and they will going to beat me up and kill me if I will not renounce Jesus and come back to Islam. And I said to them, uh, Jesus is my everything. He's my life. And he's my beloved. And finally I found life and peace and joy. And he loves you. And... Um, and they were so mad. They were like, uh, uh, you become a Christian. And they questioned me and I said yes. And they actually questioned my sisters too. And they were like, what did you do? Did you recruit them to uh, become full of Christ too? What are they trying to make all of us Christians here? I was like, no, not only you. All of the world. And they're like, <laughs> they're like you are crazy. And I said crazy for Jesus. And I said, Jesus, he laid down his life for me. And he was faithful unto death. And I will be faithful unto death. Because his example was more than enough for me. And I said, because he told me, if I will be ashamed of him before people, he's going to be ashamed of me before the heavenly father and the angels. And I said, I will be faithful to him. Because he didn't forsake or leave me. He's always there for me. He's so faithful. And they were, couldn't believe their ears. So they were like, so um, furiously mad and angry. They started to beat me up. They would never touch me before, but like all hell came against me. So they beat me up until like almost death. And I was unrecognizable, blue and black and bleeding. And my sisters were beaten as well. So I continued to deny and renounce Jesus. And I said, I will never do that. I better die because Jesus is my life. No Jesus, no life. And I said to them, and... Um, and they were so mad, they started like choking me and like uh, strangling me and saying, deny Jesus. And it's like my father, my brothers, like who loved me. And then suddenly they, they were just so angry. And, um, and I, I just said, I love you, I forgive you. You don't know what you're doing, but I, I, I just want to 
tell you, if you will just even kill me, I will continue to tell that Jesus loves you and I love you and I forgive you. And uh, they were so mad and I, I remember they just um, strangled me and I, I, I just passed out because they said, you're not our sister anymore, not my daughter anymore, I disown you. And, and I was completely gone. They thought I died because they choked me. Uh, but I actually passed out. The next morning, they took all my clothes my, and locked me, in, and uh, I was all bruised and swollen. But they uh, told me if I'll go to church again, and uh, again, uh, follow Jesus, they'll again, I mean, punish me unto death. But faith never gives up. And in this moment, I didn't know what to do. I ran away from home, and I, I, I just ran to church that I can just cry out my heart to the Lord. And in this moment, because I was the first one, I would just want to encourage my sisters what to do in this situation. And the Lord gave me actually Ephesians 6, 12. He said, we don't fight against, uh, fight against blood and flesh, but we fight against the spiritual realm. And my family is not my enemy. Enemy is their world. And the Lord told me, this kind will be cast out by praying fasting. And I love feasting, but I love Jesus more than food. And... Uh, and because of that, I just started fasting. I never fasted before more than three days. I mean, I like food, but uh, he told me to fast seven days. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can uh, make it. But when he tells you it's always his grace, is sufficient. And it was such a breakthrough, really. It's, he tenderized my heart, and I clearly could hear his amazing voice. And it was so much um, breakthrough, dreams and visions. And I was continuing praying for my family and declaring God's truth, replacing all the uh, lies of the enemy with his truth and declaring his promises that me and my household will serve the Lord uh, uh, in Acts 16:31, declaring that uh, me and my household be saved and we will serve the Lord. And like Joshua 24, uh, 15, we will continue. We'll just uh, I was standing in God's promises, basically, and believing and already thanking God for His uh, uh, that He's not a liar. He will really uh, complete His word, and He's faithful to uh, 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 actually come uh, through through all, fulfill all His promises. What happened, uh, my? And after that, the Lord uh, continued, was just uh, uh, bringing me to the season of fasting. It was like different fasting, 10, 21, 40 days. But it was grace was so sufficient that he drew me closer to him in such a time of worship and prayer. And in the word, I was just so uh, consumed in his presence. And uh, it brought such a breakthrough uh, because the Lord told me, don't walk in the uh, uh, hatred, but uh, opposite spirit, spirit of love, and love my family and forgive them, and not uh, walk in the bitterness. And I forgave them, and I just loved on them, and they were melted, and they couldn't handle it. Uh, and uh, and the Lord just really so faithful to His promises that most of my family came to the Lord. And five, my sister, one, my brother, my mom and dad. Praise the Lamb. Praise Jesus. And actually, my dad. Yes, yeah, thank you, Jesus. My dad, actually, he's mighty to save. Jesus is alive. And he's really a great savior. And what happened, actually, my dad was a hardcore because he was an elder in the mosque. And uh, men are really tough in Islam, but no one uh, too hard for God's hand. <laughs> and, um, and what happened? Uh, my dad actually had a car accident and he was dying. And doctor said he won't make it till the morning. And I arrived to the hospital first. And he actually humbly asked me to pray for him. And in Jesus' name. And it was showing that he believes in Jesus. And it was so humbling. And I prayed for him all night. And I said, Lord, you're merciful. Just spare his life. And he did. And then doctors announced that he will be paralyzed. And, uh, and he asked us to pray for his healing. And we lay hands and pray for his healing. And Jesus healed him. And uh, he's a healer. Thank you, Jesus. And what happened? Doctors were amazed, and uh, my father and all the around, surrounding people were amazed. What happened? Uh, they um, asked us to pray for him. We had a ministry in the hospital praying for sick. But anyways, the Lord did another thing, serving others and healing others. Uh, my dad, though, uh, he stopped practicing Islam, stopped going to um, the mosque. And last year, after 17 years of prayers, uh, I led him to the Lord. And finally, he confessed Jesus his Lord and Savior. And uh, he says, Jesus is my best friend. And he talks to you and he loves you. And thank you, Jesus is alive. And I'm still praying for my two brothers. They're not yet saved, but the Lord is mighty to save them. But it didn't finish there. The church was continually growing and evangelizing. And, um, and I was sharing the gospel the same way that I uh, came to the Lord through the sports and, and uh, through the martial arts and... Um, what happened though, our church were growing and many actually Muslims were converted to Christ. And uh, it brought so many extremists to completely uh, actually come, 
And uh, basically terrorists of Al-Qaeda, uh, they planted four bombs in our church to completely kill us. So that even the building won't uh, uh, be there. And I was in the church, I was in the worship, I was singing um, in the worship and praising the Lord. And we didn't have a clue that Sunday will be turned to the bloody Sunday. And uh, uh, in the church was about like a thousand people who were worshiping Jesus. And, um, and I remember... It was a midday when I uh, glanced to the clock, and suddenly the blast was like a uh, sound of many trumpets was like shaking, and all room was shaking like it was a big earthquake. And we saw this a big earthquake, and the sound of the trumpets was a big blast, and uh, it was deafening, and the smoke, and uh, I was thinking it's the second coming of Jesus for real because it was so shaking. And I was actually raising hands and saying, the spirit and the bride say, come Lord Jesus. Come and everyone was joining me in a worship team and were uh, welcoming Jesus' return. But Jesus came in different way, and uh, not always He comes in our ways, but in His ways they are greater. And uh, what happens? Um, and the second thought was maybe it's an electric shock because during the war we had a lot of problems with uh, electricity. But it wasn't our friend who was a military guy. He uh, came and announced in the church, he said, it's a bomb explosion. It's more bombs are hidden here. You have to run away from this facility and you have to save your lives. And chaos and panic started in the church. Everyone started uh, running for, uh, to exit. And uh, it was a three-story of the building uh, quite tall uh, that we were renting. And we were just all running to save our lives. And uh, the first bomb actually was hidden uh, and in the middle of the church in the century. And this actually injured people who were sitting in the back of the church in the middle of the church. And I started going to exit in the middle of the, I mean, um, uh, of the middle of the century. I was stopped and, um, because I saw the big hole of the blast, the bomb, and the roof was gone. And the, all the windows were blown away uh, because the blast was um, um, horrifying. Big and um, and next to the bomb uh, was so much blood and my friends were just dying in front of my eyes, without uh, legs and hands inside organs coming out. And um, this was my friends and brothers and sisters in Christ that I was just serving together to the Lord. And in this moment, I hear the voice and uh, uh, telling me jump off from this building. It was totally I knew it was the devil. And I said the Lord rebuke you and uh, took a sort of said and began in Jesus' name. And I. Uh, because the Lord gave me life, and He only has the authority to take it. And I, in this even uh, situation, I just was um, battling even in my mind. And um, my friend actually was jumping off, and I caught her on time to get her uh, from actually window. She was almost jumping off. And in this moment, I caught her on time, and I was uh, walking her by exit. And um, my other friend, who was inside organs, were coming out. I was holding her and trying to carry her through the. Uh, stairs and then the second floor actually somebody took care of her and uh, I was stopped in a corridor uh, it was a corridor behind the door that was black and dark and there was many women hidden there and they were actually injured and because of the blast of the bomb explosion they were completely naked it's a Muslim country you can't go uh, uncovered and they were asking me begging me to come and save their lives and cover them and, and carry the injured and bring them some clothing. And I said, of course, I will just go out and I will find whatever I find. I will come back. And actually, I went to the neighborhood and my sister was there. She was helping me to get all the sheets and blankets and towels, whatever I found, clothing. And I came back to the building. And uh, I could just run away and save my life, but I really want to save their lives. And I came back to the building. And uh, when I came back to the building, I um, was stuck because there was traffic. Everyone was carrying the Injured, And while I was uh, about to uh, comfort my friend who was completely in blood, uh, in this moment, I, I leaned to the firebox extinguisher that was next to me, uh, the cabinet, uh, because of heaviness, all the clothing. Uh, and I leaned to that, and I didn't have the clue that next bomb was hidden in this firebox extinguisher. And um, in this moment, I was... Actually, next bomb went off. And such excruciating pain through all my body as that I couldn't breathe. I was just fighting for my last breath. And in this moment, I couldn't even uh, open my mouth because I was fighting for my last breath. And in this moment, I just cried, in, or cried out in my heart, Jesus, save me. Jesus, help me. And when you cry out to Jesus' name, you will be saved. And like Jesus' name means Savior. And I breathed my last and I was gone. And when I experienced death and when I opened my eyes... I was standing before the Lord in heaven in all the glory and all the beauty and all the majesty. The Lord was just 
welcoming home with his arms wide open and with his uh, big smile. He was just welcoming me home. And he, with his tender and sweet voice, he said, welcome home. My daughter, I'm so happy to see you. And I was trembling. Such a fear of the Lord came upon me. I was just undone. I was thinking, I'm, I'm with unclean lips, and I was just trembling. Such a fear of the Lord came upon me, being in the presence of the Lord face to face. And I was like in such an awe. And I was just, all the thoughts I was going through my mind, what is going to say? If you're going to say, well done, faithful servant. What are you going to say? And uh, in this moment, all the thoughts going through all my mind, and I didn't know what he was going to say. And I was just trembling. I couldn't even look to his uh, face. I was on my face down. I was trembling and shaking in such a, in such a fear of the Lord because of his holiness. And, um, but then he lifted me and put my spirit in me again. And, I was, and he led me to look to his face. It was just brighter than the sun. It was so blinding, so transcending, and so radiant that I was so blinded. And then he led me to look to his eyes. That was just fire of love just consumed me. That eyes of love. And he let me look to his eyes of love and I was just melted. And then he embraced me in his arms of love. And I was so overwhelmed. I was just weeping in his presence and, and he just embraced me. And in this moment he, he just showed me all my life. It was like a snapshot of the movie. And in this moment, um, he showed my family as well. And then he gave me a choice. He said, would you like to stay here with me in heaven, my daughter, or would you like to go back? And he is such a gentleman. He never forced. He gave you freedom to choose. And in this moment, I just felt all my life I was just living for myself. My dreams, my desires, my plans, my agenda, my ways, my will. I said, I'm so sorry, Lord, please forgive me that all my life I was just living for myself. And I just came to realization that actually it's not about me, it's all about you when I died. And I said, give me a second chance to live for you. As you live, I want to live. But now I want to live for you, Lord. And uh, it's so easy to talk to Jesus. Sometimes we really uh, complicate everything, but it's really simple. It's really childlike faith. And... uh, and, and he said, oh, okay, go ahead, uh, I will see you soon. And uh, in this moment, uh, Jesus, um, when he asked me all these questions, if I want to go back and show my family and my life, he, um, at that moment I thought I need to go back for salvation of my family. No, all of them were said. And I thought I will just go back for salvation only of my family. At least, even this uh, few, I will just go back for them. But... Um, the Lord just revealed to me, and it's all, not only for salvation of my family. He said the salvation of his family, including multitudes. And, uh, and everyone asked me, what does heaven look like? Heaven is Jesus. No Jesus, no heaven. And, um, and everything is there, 24 elders and, and uh, uh, four living creatures and uh, New Jerusalem. And uh, a cloud of witnesses. But I was so fascinated by the beauty of Jesus. And his glory and his majesty and holiness and his amazing love that I just couldn't take my eyes off him. Because next to his glory, every other glory faded away. And I was just overwhelmed by his love and such a peace and overwhelming joy. But I think I really was like a magnet of love that I really encountered. That I was th- thought I was gonna explore. And in this moment, um, Jesus, Actually, I didn't want to come back. Jesus is my beloved, my bridegroom, my everything. Um, dearly beloved of my soul. And um, he's my everything. And do you know while you're with him, you pray. What he prays, you become like one. You dream like he dreams. You talk like he talks. And, um, yeah. It's like a brilliant, you see. It's like a diamond. Uh, but when you see precious stones, all the glory fade away. But when you see diamonds, the brilliant, it's like all the angles of the glory from different angles. Fascinating. And um, he's awesome, indescribable, beautiful, perfect. No words to describe him. And, um, yeah, 12 of us died. And um, two of us actually experienced death. I mean, was resurrected from death. I don't know 10 others if they were given a choice. 
I will ask them later. But two of us was uh, given the choice. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but if another time Jesus will ask me if I want to come back, I will never ever come back. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, what happened? Uh, back to earth now. Heaven coming down to earth. Um, uh, 50 was injured uh, between death and life. 12 of us were dead, like beheaded, blinded. And another guy was uh, actually had the same kind of experience. And But actually first he was taken to hell to bring the uh, reality of the lost. The Lord really wants that no one will perish. But everyone will come to the knowledge of Jesus and be saved. And uh, then he was taken to the uh, to heaven through New Jerusalem, and then uh, throne room, and then face to face with Jesus. Mine was just immediately uh, to the Lord, uh, and then just a little difference. But all the uh, experience was uh, similar with the family. The Lord showed the same, and uh, bringing the Acts 16, 20, uh, 31, that the Lord is just one salvation of the family uh, of His kingdom. But anyways, He also chose to come back. And when I was back, actually, my sister, she was there, and the Holy Spirit came upon her. She didn't even lay hands on me to pray for my resurrection. But the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, He raised me, because He's the resurrection and life. Uh, she just obeyed the small words of Holy Spirit that said pray, and she obeyed and prayed in the Spirit. She was praying in the, uh, tongues in a heavenly language, and she couldn't stop unless it was lifted. And then she stopped. But basically, I was raised from the dead, and uh, my spirit came back to my body. Come on. Next time I ask her not to play. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm joking. And what happened though? Uh, um, uh, focus. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, what happened? When I came back to my body, actually, I be- came back to the suffering. Uh, um, even though I went through the fire, like um, Azariah, Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego. But the Lord was with them. Uh, I mean, Jesus was with me too. But actually, I was completely burned. I was burned off. My skin it was unrecognizable. I didn't actually have... It was all burned off. It was a raw flesh. And I was completely blinded. Another guy was blinded too. We was completely blinded. And the doctor said, if I will ever make it, I'll be blinded all my life. And then the biggest one was my... Actually, uh, I had, had a big hole because I was leaning to the bomb. And it has a big hole, and my brain was exposed. And the doctor said, I will never make it, and they were really shaking over me. And uh, what happened, they were taking me to the hospital. And um, in this moment, my sister saw me, and she was trembling and shaking because I was so, I was unrecognizable. It's horrifying to look at me because my mom and dad almost had a heart attack because I was so horrifying to look. And my sister-in-law, who was pregnant, she was almost lost a baby. It was really terrifying to look at me. And she saw me and she was just holding herself. But she encouraged me and said, don't worry. She comforted me and said, God is sovereign and he is in control. In this moment, I was really feeling all the burns, all the pain, all the fire, all the suffering, basically. Excruciating pain. And, um, but in this moment, it's just really... Uh, in this burning moment, uh, the Lord just reminded me He's with me with His Spirit, Emmanuel. And uh, in this moment, I started worshiping Him. I started worshiping Jesus. Like um, as Silas and Paul, when they were in prison, when they started worshiping the Lord, they were set free from the uh, chains of prison. I was set free from chains of pain. Pain was lifted. And I was like worshiping Jesus about that He is a healer. And I wasn't worshiping my pain, but I was worshiping Jesus who is mighty to heal me. And, um, and in this moment of worship, uh, of course, when it's easy to worship, it's great. But when it's in the trials and tribulation, it's a sacrifice. And, uh, and it was really a sacrifice of praise that the Lord just lifted me. And uh, his presence just came. And I was so in so much peace. But basically, when they brought me to the hospital. It was a Muslim hospital. The Muslim doctors were torturing me. And they were actually, I was like, grow flesh out. I told you, the skin was burned off. So they were uh, putting the bandages on me, but ripping me off my flesh, saying, deny Jesus. And renounce him. And because you were supposed to be dead, but because you're cursed, uh, you are um, supposed to die. And they were just torturing me. And I, because the Lord, he said, love your enemy and pray for them, bless them. I was just loving and praying and blessing them and saying, I forgive you. And uh, even though you cut my body, I will just continue to cry out, Jesus loves you and I love you and I forgive you. Experience his love and forgiveness. It was just... Um, 
walking in that was just by His grace. And then at this moment, through the news, the doctors heard and, and praise the Lord for the Christian doctors. And they heard through news and they uh, flew to the Middle East and they kidnapped us from the hospital. And uh, they performed the surgeries. I had three surgeries. Doctor did possible and God did impossible. I'm supposed to not live, not see, not hear, not even breathe. But the Lord, He is a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is yesterday and today and forever the same as a healer. And He heals. And actually, everyone was uh, in the church praying and fasting. And, um, and everyone was laying hands. All of the world was praying. And um, I was actually all uh, praying for myself as well, laying hands and pleading the blood of Jesus and uh, declaring that I'm healed by His stripes. And He did heal me. He opened my eyes in three days. It's like Paul, when he saw the glory of the Lord, he was like, after three days, uh, his eyes was open. It was like the same. And then my body was, uh, about a year, the Lord gave me a new skin, and it was a miracle. My head was really like, uh, the brain was really the most uh, between death and life. Doctors were really crying and shaking over me. I was like in ICU in coma, in and out. And, um, but he's a healer. And, um, yeah, he completely healed me. But I have one scar. In my head. Uh, I don't have any scars. The Lord completely did a supernatural miracle. But one scar left. But I was like, Lord, I, was compl- I want complete healing 100%. And I was like, it's like no hair growing here because of the um, uh, scar here. But the Lord told me, uh, would you be honored to share the scars that I'm sharing in my hands and my feet and my side and my head? And I was so convicted. I said, it will be such an honor to share the suffering of Jesus. As we share his suffering, we share his joy, and he's our joy set before us. And I was, I have this card that I will show you the remembrance that uh, what happens that I won't forget. Do you see it? It's a little bit left. But it's a little scar, the testimony of the mark of love. And, um, but it didn't finish there. Jesus is so kind. And um, um, the terrorists actually were caught, and they were sentenced to death. But before I go to that, uh, uh, everyone who was in the church, the members and the ministers uh, who converted from uh, Islam to Christ, they were uh, actually in jail and they were interrogated and they were tortured for their faith as well. And they were saying, deny Jesus, and they were beaten up. And, but through the persecution, they had the opportunity sh- to share the love of Jesus and walk in opposite spirit. And, uh, because we don't serve God of hatred, we serve God of love. And... Um, and so many came to the Lord, praise the Lord, and doctors and in the uh, um, prison, so many. But the Lord did miracles, like in the Bible, in the book of Acts, uh, he opened the iron doors and set free, like, my sister, won, my sister was one of them. Like, the jail's door, the iron doors were open. It was like angel were opening the door and setting her free. It was the Lord just intervening amazingly. Uh, but the terrorists were caught up and sentenced to death. My sister saw them and... Um, because they bombed many other churches and killed so many other people, they were actually um, found out and they were sentenced to death. But because I experienced God's love and His forgiveness, I choose to forgive. And uh, forgiveness is a choice, and love is a choice. And I, of course, they murdered me, and they murdered my, uh, murdered my friends and injured so many. But because I experienced God's love and His forgiveness, I, I choose to forgive. And I was... Uh, set free and restored. And uh, because I was one of the enemy of the Lord, but he made me his friend by his amazing love. And, uh, and I choose to love my fr- uh, friends and enemies and bless them and pray for them. And uh, in an act of love, show them. And we were reading a letter to our president um, saying, um, forgive, we are asking for mercy. Because it was shown mercy to us, we want to show mercy to them. And they weren't killed. They were sentenced to, uh, in prisons for life, but they were not killed. And then um, just recently, I met the head of the terrorists who prepared them in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and uh, the terrorists who was with Al-Qaeda and with Osama bin Laden. And he was a terrorist who was preparing all of them uh, to be a terrorist. And that head... Because we were praying for their salvation, the Lord encountered a terrorist who was a soul, and the Lord told, made him a Paul. And he had a dream of Jesus, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And we <laughs> praising Jesus that he made his enemies his friend. And actually, we had such a reconciliation. I, I, I said, I forgive you. And he really wept and said, I'm not worthy because I killed so many. Uh, but 
I said the Lord, I wasn't worthy as well, but the Lord, His love is set us free. And He wants to set us free. And I forgive you and release forgiveness and love. And He wept and wept and wept. And uh, the Lord is bringing uh, reconciliation by His amazing love. And, uh, and if you have any bitterness and forgiveness in your life, I just want to encourage you to experience His love and forgiveness and choose to forgive. And you will be set free from your prison. And uh, you will be delivered. And um, you will be healed. And uh, I just want to finish with this because I'm sorry I'm running all the time. And uh, I was just suddenly, uh, I told Eric, I said, I will flow with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and uh, uh, what happened, uh, I just want to finish with this because it's so much to share. But um, I believe we are living in a generation of the return of Jesus. And the Lord is continuing coming through dreams and visions. And the most dreams and visions he, he is just revealing that he is coming back for his bride. And he's really jealous. And he wants you to come back to your first love and love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And love your neighbor and your enemy. And be his vessel of his love and ambassadors of his love. And uh, I just want to invite you to that because I believe you will going to come suddenly like a thief, Jesus. And... Um, it will be like a day of Noah. Everyone will be drinking, eating, and uh, getting married, but he will come suddenly. And I just want to uh, invite you to live as a worthy of his calling and um, loving him and loving people and loving his enemy. And this is my invitation for you to uh, and love Muslims as well. And if he's calling you to Middle East, love them, pray them, and bless them. And, uh, and I, I believe also the Lord, what he's doing, he is actually bring a reconciliation to Ishmael and Isaac. And he's actually coming to, through dreams and visions to Muslims because so many are afraid to da- go to dark and uh, uh, dark places. And, uh, but Jesus is coming himself. But I believe he's provoking through that, bringing so many Muslims to Jesus, provoking Isaac to jealousy. And when that all fullness of Gentiles and Jews will, I mean, come to the Lord, the Jewish man, Jesus, will return. And, uh, and I believe, he said, when the gospel will be preached. Gospel of good news, of peace and love. And it's Jesus Christ. And uh, he is the ultimate of prince of peace who will bring peace. And, uh, and will bring peace between brothers. And, uh, I, and because of that, I just want to invite you to pray. Because when you pray, your love uh, grows. And, uh, yeah, and I just want to invite you to that. And... Uh, yeah, live your life because I never knew that I'm going to die when I was 19. But death came like this. But I just learned a lesson now to live for eternity. Because life is short. We're going to live 80 or 100 years maximum. And then it's eternity. And it's really important what you're living. You're, what are you investing your time today? I, um, I decided to invest my time to eternity. And who is eternal? It's God and His Word and His people. And living for eternity and focusing my eyes on Jesus, the love of my soul. And living worthy of his calling just by loving him and sharing his love. And this is my invitation to you. And thank you for having me. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Yeah, stay, stay standing. I told you what a special treat. <laughs> a really good one. You know, she, she, I don't even know if there need to be uh, a request for a response, but how many felt some sense of something need to shift? I, I don't know. I could, there was like a list of things. I want her to pray over everything. So anything that made it to your list that you need to respond to, stay standing. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I, want, <laughs> I would like our friend to pray over us. Holy Spirit, I thank you for dreams and visions 
or all my brothers and sisters. I thank you for open heaven, releasing angels. Lord, I thank you. You said in the last days you're going to pour out your spirit. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time that you are coming. Lord, I thank you. You're pouring your glory. And I ask that you will just come through dreams and visions and heavenly visitations. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your touch, your touch of love. Because where is your presence, there is freedom from all the bondage. Lord, I thank you that your resurrection in life. I thank you. I just declare resurrection and life in every area of everyone here. In the spirit, soul, and body. Lord, I thank you. Resurrection and life and healing by your amazing love. And right now I ask that you'll baptize everyone with the power of your love. Lord, I ask that everyone will soar here in the power of your love, Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you will exchange every hatred to love. Lord, let them experience your love and forgiveness. And will know that you are. God, merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Oh Lord, let them see you face to face in all your beauty and glory and majesty, in all the holiness. Lord, give the fear of the Lord. Everyone will just come back to the first love, that your bride will wake up, that she will return to the first love, that she will be, Lord, lovesick, lovesick bride. Awaken to you and will usher your return, saying, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, we just ask, come. Come and have your ways. And I thank you, Lord, that your bride will be ready because she will overwhelm, will be overwhelmed by your love. Even through trials and tribulations, she, you will give her perseverance. You will give her perseverance, Lord. I thank you for that perseverance, Lord. And everyone, Lord, here who has, Lord, the wound of unforgiveness, Lord, and bitterness, I ask just touch them with your love. Heal that ancient wound of bitterness and unforgiveness. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for impartation of your forgiveness, of your mercy, of your love, your loving kindness, Lord. I just thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Just uh, release your ministering angels of fire to minister to them, Lord. Lord, I thank you for dreams and visions and open heaven. Lord, I thank you for signs and wonders and miracles to take place, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I just thank you for breakthrough. Let's give them the mindset of heaven. Lord, I thank you we are your heirs and we are sitting by the right hand of you, our bridegroom. We thank you and give us a, Lord, the mind of Christ. Let us see what you see in heaven. And I thank you. Everything is under the name of Jesus. And we thank you that we reign with you, Lord. And we praise you. We just glorify you. Give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And I just pray over your bride. Bless them and guard them. Let your face, the countenance of your face shine upon them. Lord, be gracious to them and increase your favor. And give them your shalom. Shalom.